blue, blue heaven, one amongst the sisters of seven, calling herself by the name Nagaland, avowed for its myriad tribes, eco-rich and vibrant heritages. These tribes have stood for ages, through the constant changes that divides, from the ancestral folklores to the fearless warrior's cries and roars, eulogizing its ancestors through folk songs, where numerous festival belongs. Yes, here lies my land, my home, my Nagaland. After listening to this beautiful poetry, that in a way, tried to capture your attention, now, the students of Class 8B would like to take you on a virtual tour of this beautiful piece of land. located in eastern India. It lies between Myanmar and Assam. It is famous for its various tribes and diverse culture. It is also known as the land of festivals as tribes practice their culture freely in the state. But I wonder a state with such diverse culture, when was it formed? The history of the Nagas is not so peculiarly known to us. It was believed, based on the linguistic evidences, that a group of people or the tribe from China migrated to the south of the Himalayas. It was believed that the Nagas and other Indians of the Chinese descent originated between the region of the Yellow and the Yangtze River in northwestern China, and they arrived in India in several waves of migration that took place over several centuries, where around the river Iravadi and Chinwin in Burma, the original settlements were made. The Chinese tribes were not homogeneous. They spoke a vast number of languages and had diverse customs and social cultures. As many of the groups settled down, it became and came to be known as the Nagaland. As far as the educational stats are concerned, the literacy rate of Nagaland is around 80% and I am really surprised to see that a state with one third of its population of tribal people doesn't lag behind the terms of education. Hello everyone, today we are going to give you a brief insight about one of the hidden gems of our country, the state of Nagaland. Nagaland is a mountainous state in northeast India bordering Myanmar. Nagaland has a lot of tourism and one can indulge in trekking, climbing, camping, rafting and other exciting adventures. Also, if you are into fishing, Sikha River, Mansiri are good spots for fishing. Nagaland is a perfect place for nature lovers or for people, those who are looking for a quiet, peaceful retreat. And now, more about top attractions. For Nagaland, Rangapur Forest is known for its wildlife and various plants that are relevant to make medicines. It covers 4.9 acres of plant and is a place for nature lovers. You can visit Rangapur throughout the year but not in the monsoon rains. It has many endangered species preserved which are rarely seen these days. Also, if you are looking for a resort, we suggest you the Heritage DC Building. Heritage DC Building is one of the most ancient buildings in Kohima and it is known for its sheer resplendence and luxury. It is a resort where you can spend your time in peace and it's absolutely splendid. It is known for its location and one can spend a long day here shuffling through handicrafts and Local products bought at reasonable prices. Also, if you are into adventure, we suggest the Chafu Peak, known as the Switzerland of East, is an important tourist attraction. You can do trekking, camping, etc. and scenery will fulfill your mind. You can also go for shopping in Kohima. It is also known as the Valley of Flowers. Now let us hear about the famous monument in Nagaland, the Kachari Ruins. 
The Kachari ruins are set of ruins which are located in Dimapur. Their origin and purpose are largely mysterious. They are a series of mushroom dome pillars. The history dates back to the 10th century. It is believed that they are similar to the game of chess. Two pillars are standing but others are crumbled down. I hope that you enjoyed the virtual tour of Nana. I believe in God. I just spell it nature. Famed as Asia's first green village and India's most beautiful village, Khanama, situated near the Indo-Myanmar border in the state of Nagaland, is about 20 km away from the state capital, Kohima. The village is estimated to be around 700 years old and covers an area of about 123 square kilometers. The total population of the village is about 3,000 people settled in almost 600 households. The village is a great place to introduce yourself to the Naga lifestyle and unwind in the lap of nature. A visit to the village offers tourists an opportunity to interact with the people of the local Angami tribe and learn how they have succeeded in creating a more conservative and sustainable ecosystem. Tourists can also spend a night at the village and experience traditional homestays managed by the locals. The village is also known for being one of the cleanest villages of Nagaland. Lying on the outskirts of the city, it is known for conserving rare and endangered species of plants and animals and also for terrace cultivation on the slopes of hills. To assert its desire of sustainable development, the village has also adopted organic farming. Kisama Heritage Village, Naga Heritage Village, Kohima Museum and Kohima War Cemetery are some great places that can be visited in Konoma. The land of tribes, Nagaland, is in a board amongst the hills yet to be explored. The picturesque state has stellar landscapes, beautiful tea gardens, high mountains and vibrant culture. The nearly 2 million population of Nagaland has about 88% of Christian occupancy according to 2011 census. Nagaland has become one of the three states with Christian majority in India followed by Mizoram and Meghalaya. Though the main occupation of the people in this region is irrigation, but they are blessed with dexterity, especially the women. The ordinary metals such as iron, tin and brass are used for making exquisite jewellery. The soft and sweet spoken Nagaland people do not mind spiciness in their food. The kitchen of every house has some good deal of spices stored. Even the ginger used by the people in this region is different from the regular one. Nagaland is a land of unique culture and traditions. It is known for its relish, bamboo and cane products. The most important works of art and craft exist in the form of basketry, weaving and wood carving. Nagaland's jewellery and beadwork is famous all throughout India. The Nagas are skilled in making ornaments like bracelets, armlets, necklaces which are intricate in design. Now let us delve into deeper traditions of Nagaland by discovering the Hornbill Festival. The Hornbill Festival is a rock festival held every year in Kohima, the capital of Nagaland. To encourage inter-tribal relationship and to promote the cultural heritage of Nagaland, the government of Nagaland holds this festival every year in the first week of December. The aim of this festival is to revive and promote the cultural heritage of Nagaland and its extravaganza and traditions. For visitors, it means a closer connect to people, their culture, the song, music, dance, and their customs. Now to talk about the language and the attire of the people of Nagaland. According to the 2011 census data of Nagaland, Nagaland contains of 40 languages and 17 dialects. Languages spoken in Nagaland for different tribes are as follows, Puchri, Naga, etc. Nagavis is also spoken as the native mother tongue of the Timasa community one of the in one of the largest cities of Nagaland, Dimapur. Now, I further would say upon. These are some traditional dresses of Nagaland. 
An important item which the people of Nagaland adorn is a shawl. Now we need to have an insight about the cuisine. A typical Naga meal consists of rice, a meat dish, one or two boiled vegetable dishes, and chutney or pickle known as tattu. Rice is the main carbohydrate source in the Naga diet, and this region produces a number of prized rice varieties. But rice is also imported into this region from different states. Dried or smoked meat forms are also an important part of the Naga cuisine. Fermented bamboo shoots made from the tender shoot of the bamboo tree are often served with fish and pork. Now I will tell you about Nagaland's major tribal community. The Angami tribe is one of Nagaland's major tribal communities. 98% of the Angamis are Christians. The Angamis are known for the cultivation of terraced wet rice. They are also popular for their wood crafts, cane furniture, woven shawls and bamboo weave. Nagas have been known to love music and it has remained an integral part of every occasion. Naga and sisters often used to communicate with one another by singing in different tunes. Any festival is incomplete without its folk music and dance. Naga folk songs are both romantic and historical. <laughs> Hello everyone, Nagaland is the land of different tribal groups. These groups play different sports and games. The state is blessed with nature all around and it offers sports lovers like angling, camping, trekking and mountaineering. Now about Naga wrestling. Naga wrestling is one of the oldest traditional game played since time immemorial. The game is played to encourage health, fitness and friendship. It has been always known for uphill justice to whoever competed in the wonderful sport. Another type of traditional game is touch and catch game. Now let's hear about some other games. The indigenous games of various tribes of Nagaland demonstrated at Raj Bhavan include Naga go karting, Naga wrestling, spear target throw, strength competition, jumping competition, bamboo stilt walk, etc. So, hope you all got a glimpse of the various games played in Nagaland. Over 70% of the population is dependent on agriculture of Nagaland. Cash crops like sugarcane and potato are also becoming popular. Coffee cardamom and tea are grown as plantation crops in Nagaland. The agriculture in Nagaland is derived mainly of two types, terrace cultivation and shifting cultivation. Agriculture is the most important economic activity in Nagaland, where more than 90% of the population is employed in agriculture. The main crops include rice, corn, millets, pulses, tobacco, oil seeds, sugarcane, potato and jute. Nagaland's economy mainly depends on agriculture as more than 60% of the population are engaged in this field. 
its economy also depends on forestry cottage industry and tourism so this was an overview on agriculture and economy Nagaland is one among the best places to pay a visit to in India. The state's forests bloom with eye-captivating flora and fauna. It is a paradise for nature's lover. Let's talk about the different animals found in the beautiful state of Nagaland. Nagaland's forests are a home to a variety of fauna. Wild animals found there include stag, bear, mithun, etc., and other water creatures. Trout. A freshwater fish from the salmon family is a rare species. Mithun, a semi-domesticated cod, is the most valued species in the state. Now, let's have a look at the beautiful bird species found in the state. Prominent birds include hornbills, varieties of pheasants, mountain peacock, the rare and elusive bush rainbow pan, species of pheasant and the state bird of Nagaland. Varieties of jungle foals and other varieties of smaller birds. The great Indian hornbill is one of the most famous birds found in the state. Now, something about flowering plants. Nagaland is considered as a cradle of flowering plants, and many ancient angiosperms are present. It is the center of origin of some rice variety and secondary origin of citrus, chili, maize, etc. Nagaland is also home to many rare and endangered species like holong, makai, rhododendron, ginseng found only in Tuensang district at higher altitude and nahar. Many in rare and endangered species of orchids are also present. Some of them are red vanda, foxtail, bamboo orchid, paphiopedilum, cymbidium tigrinum and pleione. Nagaland is an immensely beautiful state and it is so because of the rich biodiversity so we need to ensure that the biodiversity isn't at threat because of human activities We have come to the end of this beautiful journey and I wish to conclude that Nagaland might be small geographically but is diverse culturally. With its mystical, untouched, unexplored lands, this heaven for explorers is slowly but steadily catching fancy of the traveler's community. At the end of this insightful journey, 
Are we not eager to join this community? A big thank you to all those who have been with us in this virtual voyage. Sumangi, God.